I'll go ahead and record as well. Make sure we share it when it is over with quotes like we did Monday with the players. Um, and we will do the format the same way. Raise your hand if you have a question and I'll call on you. But first, we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Mitchell. Coach, you are on mute. Well, my, my first Zoom press conference is off to a great start. Um, and the technology is hopefully working now. You got me now, Evan? Yes, sir. You're good to go. Okay. Great. Uh, good to be with everybody today. It's, uh, it's an exciting season ahead, full of uh, a lot of challenges, I'm sure. But we have a energetic team and uh, a resilient team and a team that's really worked hard to uh, put themselves in a position to have a, a great season. And it's been a lot of fun to watch the team develop. And um, we're, we're, we're very excited about the upcoming season. Uh, it's certainly been a, a, a challenging uh, last few months for our, our basketball program uh, with what the pandemic has uh, sent our way. And just so proud of how everyone has work their way through this and it's it's uh, been a tremendous tremendous effort by so many people players and staff and then uh, certainly for me challenging times recovering from surgery that i had in june and uh, i'm just deeply appreciative and grateful to um, our staff and our players for uh, carrying on in excellent fashion while i've been out so it's been great to get back to work and to get back around the team and been able to really get a good feel for what I think we're capable of. So um, exciting, uh, unusual certainly, but nevertheless, we're excited for the 2021 season. Thanks coach. Again, raise your hand if you have a question. Our first one today is from Graham Hayes. Hi, Matthew. Thanks for being here. I'm glad to see you uh, doing well there. Um, just Thanks. curious to, to start, just what, what challenges are there or were there in putting together a uh, non-conference schedule that, for the season? Well, the, the challenge has been just what uh, every, everyone is, is basically dealing with, with uh, the same pandemic, but are, are working through it in, in different ways. And so, um, you know, it's been, it's been challenging to get uh, the conference schedule together and, and for people to agree what's going on and, and for us to analyze what was in the best interest of, of just our member schools. And then as you start to work with non-conference, you're, you're working with uh, different conferences that are, that are going in different directions and everybody is working really hard to try to provide a safe uh, environment so the students and, and players can can have a, a, a season in 2021. So, um, you know, just the limited number of games and um, the safety precautions that the different schools are, are using uh, it's 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 been quite challenging. So we are very close to uh, finishing up ours, but it's 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 tough out there right now to to get a to get a schedule put together with all those factors in play. I appreciate it. Thank you, Larry Vaught. Matthew, just wonder. I mean, I know you you've talked a little bit about how difficult the past few months and all are for you. What was it like for your family? I mean, not just your player, but what was it like for your family this last few months? Well, I appreciate uh, how supportive they've been, and you know, it was uh, it was good in in some respects as far as being able to just slow down and, and spend some time um, with with family. So, uh, you know, anytime, um, even for someone who Larry, you've known for a long time. I'm not the smartest guy. So you start poking around my brain. There's not a whole lot of damage you can do there, but uh, anytime you start drilling holes 
in your skull, it's a, a bit of a scary proposition, you know, initially, but the team over at UK Healthcare just did an amazing job and, and um, the surgery was, was very successful and my family was extremely supportive um, during my recovery. So um, very, very blessed and, and grateful for a wonderful family. John Wong. Hey, Matthew, it's good to see you up and about. Thanks, <laughs> I'm sure John. that um, uh, this year, I mean, it's been a while since you've had such a potentially massive post presence uh, to play with. I mean, as a coach personally, how energizing is it for somebody like you to uh, be able to think about strategy, to, uh, to go along with Ryan Howard, to, to have all these bigs now to design your team around? Do you wake up in the middle of the night planning plays and things of that nature? It's uh, very exciting to uh, see the talent that we have uh, in the post position. And, you know, we, um, we're so proud of how hard uh, Kiki McKinney and Tatiana Wyatt have worked through their career when, when they haven't had a lot of depth and uh, have just played so hard and, and done such a great job. And you can see that experience show through um, in, in our practices. And, and so I think they're poised for a, a great senior season. And then, you know, the, the three newcomers are just outstanding and, and potentially um, we could have a very deep uh, post rotation, which certainly uh, we love and helps our style of play and trying to keep pressure both offensively and defensively. You know, when you have some post players who can really run to the rim on offense and, and uh, put pressure on, on the opponent uh, in transition offense. And then uh, I think our physical presence down around the basket is, is going to improve with, with the additions of um, Olivia and Dreana and, Naya, they're, they're all three of them are, are, are unique individual players. And so Olivia uh, has great size and um, she, she has uh, that experience that she's gained over a couple of years in college already. And I, I like her maturity and um, she, she's a very, very intelligent player and, and just gives us some great size, great power around the rim. Uh, Dreana Edwards is just, fantastic player she's not as tall as as Olivia and Naya but she is very very powerful and um, great score uh, very versatile can handle the basketball uh, unusually well for a for a post player um, can shoot the ball away from the basket tough and physical around the basket and a great passer you know, I think we I think one of the big things that that is unique this year is uh, I've really enjoyed seeing us develop a high low game that that we just haven't had in the last few years and uh, a part of that is is the way uh, Dre is able to pass the ball really really good passer from the high post down into the low post and then Nia Leveretter is uh, a freshman who just motor will not stop she just is going um going to give you everything she has it seems every practice it's it's really impressive and uh, very long explosive athlete so she's already making her presence felt uh, in practices with her rebounding really has a great nose for the ball great timing can go get some some big rebounds and um, all three of those players that I just talked about in addition to Kiki and and, and Todd you know really give us some some added shot blocking and so it's it's a it's a good good group they work hard and are getting better and we just have to really continue to develop and and uh, make sure we pay attention to the fundamentals and uh, if they'll come in with a great attitude every day pay attention to fundamentals and just uh, show tremendous work ethic they'll develop into a, a really really good post court Larry Vaught. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. Matt, you, you told me to be 
real cautious and not ex put too much expectations on what I was thinking Treasure Hunt was going to bring to the team for you now. Now that you've been out on the court and seen her a few times, do I still need to be cautious or is my optimism okay? Oh, it's all right to be optimistic, uh, Larry, because she's a, a talented player and she is just uh, working, you know, all the freshmen. It, it just never fails, it seems like, have – to make an adjustment to the pace um, with which we practice and how important each play is in practice and the detail that you have to pay attention to. So, so she is um, tremendously talented, so gifted. Um, another physical presence and, and upgrade for us in the wing, on, on, on our, in our wing position, she just, um, has great length, great size, very strong for a freshman. And, you know, all of that will just continue to improve. And um, tremendous shooter, uh, very poised ball handler, um, still working hard to get up to speed defensively. But, you know, that's a process we go through every year. And, and, and so she's getting better at that every day. But um, tremendously gifted, talented. Um, we just, uh, again, I, I'll – just tell you, we have to do a great job coaching her and paying attention to the details and making sure that that um, we help her learn the right way to do things uh, on the basketball court and, and how to be a Kentucky Wildcat. And she has just shown tremendous improvement and, um, you know, potentially can be a big weapon for us. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited she's with us. Alex Walker. Hey coach, glad to hear you're doing well. Uh, two questions for you. Uh, number one, pardon me if I missed this over the summer, but is there an update on Jasmine and Robin's uh, transfer at all? If they're eligible to play right away or if they have to wait a year? And number two, I uh, saw this morning that Jeff Wall said you guys won't be playing this year, won't be playing UK Louisville, but you are going to resume the series next year. Uh, can you confirm that, number one? And number two, um, what was the reasoning behind that? Yeah, we, we, we definitely uh, are pushing that game back a year. And, uh, you know, I just think it was a casualty of, of, of the pandemic of COVID-19. And um, I think that I think the ACC settled in on 20 games. Um, and, and that's, you know, cer certainly put some um, pressure on, on and some compression on the schedule. And, um you know, I think in talking to Jeff, when he and I had conversation that, that uh, you know, it's, a, it's an important game for our Commonwealth and uh, it's an important game for our program. They, they are, they're always such a challenge each and every year and so tough. And, um, and so we, we are, we definitely benefit by playing them. And this year we weren't able to get it, get it done. Um, and, you know, I just think that there's some things that are, happening during the pandemic that um, are not ideal, but, but we just got to make the best of it and move forward. And so uh, we will, we will definitely resume this, the series and it's, it's, it's important. It's an important game. Um, Jasmine and Robin uh, are, we are not expecting them to play. Um, there, there would have to be, you know, you have to get some information uh, different before I start to, you know, count on them. So they are in practice and working hard and tremendous additions to the program. And um, if something on that changes, we will certainly update everyone as, as soon as it does. But it, just the way that I approach it, we, we are, we are not expecting them to play would be a tremendous bonus if they were able to. So um, th that's my update with Jasmine and Robin. And we're, we're very fortunate to have them. Uh, at Kentucky. Thank you. Appreciate it. Christy Thomas Scuddy. Hey, Matthew. First of all, great to see you. A year ago, you told me that for Ryan's improvement, you needed her to play with better pace and intensity. She mentioned pace the other day as well. What specifically have you and the staff been working on with her to help her in that area? Well, Christy, I think the, the, most important thing for us uh, 
as a staff is to constantly remind Ryan of the goals that she set for herself. You know, she, she wants to be the, the best player in the country. And so uh, there's a lot of people who may want to do that. Um, she's one of the few people who wants to do it and actually has a chance to be that. Uh, so so t- for us, I, I think it just comes down to um, trying to hold her to a high standard every day because uh, she is so gifted. Uh, you know, Christy, I think that it, it, it's a fine line between, um, you know, that talent being a blessing and that talent being a curse in, in some ways and how you approach, if things come so easy to you, um, you feel like you're seeing results and you're seeing production and you're not uh, giving your absolute best, um, that will over time will, will end up uh, getting you to a spot where you aren't the best. And so it, it, it's just a matter of, of reminding her uh, she's so competitive, she's so driven um, that just, I, I think that's the, the, the one thing I go into practice with every day, just trying to make sure that uh, I hold her to a very high standard. And, you know, if I see something um, that, that she needs to do a little bit better, encouraging her to do that because she is so um, well-rounded. She just makes such a difference. Uh, every phase offensively, defensively, she is, uh, can make game-changing plays. And so, you know, she, uh, she has a chance to be the best player out there and, you know, as, as a coaching staff, I think it's just important to remind her that that's what she wants to be and she needs to practice uh, with great uh, pace and intensity each and every day. And it'll pay off for her as, a, as an individual and it'll also pay huge dividends for um, how the other players respond. Uh, I always think when the best player on your team is the best person in practice, uh, it really elevates everybody. Um, and uh, I always admired that uh, out of Tamika Catchings and, and watching her for a year. And she was, when I was at Tennessee, she was clearly the best player uh, on the team and the best player in the, in, in the country, really. And, uh, and she just practiced so very hard. So I've always tried to use her as an example uh, for our players um, and, and, and really uh, let them know what a big impact that can make on, on not only them as a player, but on, on, on the team and, and the team's success. And then one last question. A year ago, for the better part of the season, a little over 30% of your offense was coming off opponents' turnovers. Now that you've got these rim protectors, what, how might the defense look differently this season? Are you able to get out and extend even more knowing that you know, mistakes are okay. And with those rim, rim protectors, will you be able to do anything differently in terms of your overall defense? Well, I, I think we can be more dynamic, definitely. And I think we've added athleticism, not only at the post, but we've also, uh, we're, we're more athletic on the wing, not only with newcomers, but some of our returners have just really, uh, it's been incredible to me to see the, the progress they've made in these challenging times, you know, we, uh, we certainly did not have our normal summer and, and, and time to f- focus in on getting stronger. And uh, there was just a great commitment from our players uh, on their own at home. Uh, you know, Chastity Patterson looks fantastic. Uh, Blair Green just looks so much stronger and, and, and more athletic and, and she's, much more dynamic on the defensive end. Um, Emma King has just, you know, made tremendous strides you know, as a freshman that didn't uh, play a tremendous amount. She, she obviously worked, uh, worked really, really hard. And, um, you know, so that's just an example of some of our returners who, who just kind of stand out and, 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 and you just, you're fueled with the confidence that you can go out and you can, uh, put some lineups out there that can extend and can play tough pressure, disruptive defense. And then uh, as far as anything differently, I, I, re- I really like uh, 
how we look in, in some half court zone that's very aggressive, but we're, we're bigger and longer and uh, just take up a lot of space. And, and I think we can be a really disruptive zone defensive team uh, in the, in the half court uh, this, this season. So a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement around that, that end of the court uh, defensively. I, I think we have a lot of options uh, where we can really put a lot of pressure on, on the opponent. Thank you. And I, you know, one thing I'd say on that too, is that, you know, uh, we have that reputation, but we, we try to make it clear to the team, you have to go out and earn it every single year. You, you can't just say, because we're Kentucky, we we're going to, we're going to turn them over and we're going to get those points. You have to go out and earn it. And, um, I like where we are on that right now. I think the team's working hard. We've got a long way to go and a lot of improvement to make, but, um, I think this is going to have this, this group definitely has the potential to be an outstanding um, Kentucky attacking uh, disruptive defense. Thank you. I have a couple of hand raised here, so we'll call out three here. Um, we'll start with Zaggy Hogan and then Graham Hayes and then John Wong. Zach? I don't know. What's, hey, what's coach. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, just glad, glad to hear you're doing better. I just wanted to talk to you about uh, your rotations for the upcoming year, um, how you figure you're about to go eight or nine, maybe even 10 players deep this year. Um, having a player like six foot four, Olivia Owens is a little bit different than the last couple of years. How does that potentially change your offensive game plan, kind of building on the inverse of that last question? And then I guess just how is the off season uh, and your uh, surgery and recovery kind of affected how you have been able to watch your players and figure out these rotations? Yeah. So we, um, we, we are not at a spot yet where I feel comfortable on, you know, exactly what those rotations will be. Um, we're, we're still uh, developing and growing and, and, and trying to make practice extremely competitive. And, um, and so that's where we really always know that that, that will shake out. And, but I do think there's potential, uh, very realistic potential for us to be uh, 10 deep. Uh, I, I, I just think that that is, um, and, and really right now with, with uh, all, all 12 of the players who are eligible for this, this season, you, you, can, you can see um, everybody out there, you can see a pathway for them to get playing time. We, we, have, a, we have a very talented group. Um, and, and if Jasmine and Robin were eligible, we'd have, we'd have 14. So, I mean, we've done a really good job uh, of, of building a solid team, uh, and, and a team with depth. And so now it's just up to the, to the players and, and, you know, us as coaches to develop them and, and, and find out what those rotations will be. But it's, um, there's some combinations where, you know, you can play four guards in one post and still be pretty, uh, have some pretty good size out on the court. And, um, so I think that could cause some problems. You, you could, um, even swing, um, one of you know, like a, a, a Dreana Edwards could swing out of the the four, the five, and and probably get some reps at the three. So there's some versatility there where um, we will just continue to let that develop and shake out in practice. So um, you know, the way that it's, it's affected me is that I just I in my recovery I was. Uh, I wasn't able to get around the team for, for a while and had to stay at home and rest. And then, you know, you progress back. I just started observing some practices and then finally we progressed into actually getting on the floor and, and, and getting back at it. And so just can't thank our coaching staff enough. Um, Kyra LZ, Nia Butts, Amber Smith, uh, Daniel Boyce, our, um, one of our staff members has done a great job stepping on the floor and, and, um, and, and aiding the, the staff as we've developed the team. And uh, Amy Tilly, our director of ops, has just done an amazing job. And Courtney Jones, our athletic trainer, I just can't tell you uh, how much work they had to, to do. So um, really grateful for the staff and, 
and uh, I'm, I'm grateful that, that they did such a great job and, and kept the, uh, the core values and principles of our program going. And so the team, you know, the first time I got to see the team, I was just really amazed. I was so grateful for how hard everybody had worked. So it was a, it was a lot of fun to um, have that experience and uh, just to know that, that the program is, is very solid. Graham Hayes. Thanks. Matthew, you've, you've talked um, about that recovery process being perhaps a little slower than you expected, or maybe you hoped. Um, what, what were some of the frustrations you know, that you encountered during that? And even now, is it difficult to, to be patient with, with yourself? Yeah, the, it, the, I think that's the, the, the biggest challenge was just to be patient. So, you know, the initial challenge was uh, the physical recovery and then and you having um, the, the, you know, without getting into it in too much detail, the, the, the surgical area was, was hard to, and still is healing. So that was a big challenge um, just with, you know, the, the, the pain in, in your head and, and, and trying to get over that. And that uh, bone heals very, very slowly. And so, um, that that is that is uh, difficult and and was difficult, and then just uh, you know being patient and, and just knowing how uh, how fast paced basketball is. It's just you know um, the team had been practicing, and then when you show up at, at practice, and uh, boy, it's moving really fast. And so just being patient and knowing that it's just not all going to come back in one day. And the coaches have been so supportive and just been, uh, it's, it's been an amazing process, but I, I do think just being patient um, when, you know, 25 years of coaching, when you're just going, you know, nonstop, uh, then you have to slow down. That, that was, uh, that was a bit of a challenge. John Wong, then Carolyn Peck, then Alex Walker. Matthew, the environment in Memorial Coliseum is going to look a lot different this year with attendance capped at 15%. You're going to have a lot of people who are going to be disappointed. They're not going to be able to eyeball your team in, in person. Uh, so much is dependent on enthusiasm and fan support. You've got such a loyal fan base. What do you want to say to the fans who just aren't going to be able to see your team this year in person? Well, it's, it's um, you know, going to be – a, a tough, tough time. I'm sure if we uh, end up in that spot where uh, people who want to come to the game can't come to the game, and that's so, so disappointing, and and I know sad for people. Um, but you know, I, I just hope that this team can, um, even if it's through you know watching on television. Appears that MM has froze there. Let's see if he pops back on. There you go, coach. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how much of that you heard, but uh, we left think... off at we left off at, you know, even if they get to see their personalities through television. Yeah, and I just think this can be a team that can bring you a lot of joy and happiness watching. I know they're going to play really hard. And um, I would just, you know, I think we've all had to learn how important um, our attitude and our outlook is during the pandemic. And I think we just got to, uh, as a fan base, stay supportive. And, and uh, no matter how you are watching the game, whether you're fortunate enough to be in the the, the, the building and watching if that's a possibility or if you're watching at home or listening on the radio, I think it's just important uh, for everyone to stay positive and know that um, everyone's working as hard as humanly possible to provide this opportunity for uh, our players and, and all the players around the country to play basketball and um, we'll just have to be grateful for what we, what we do have. Carolyn Pett. Coach Mitchell, very good to see you. Um, I got a question. First is about uh, limitations, and the other is the uh, relief of limitations. So first of all, 
When a player comes back from injury or surgery, a doctor limits them. And I'm wondering if there are limit, limits that have been placed on you and what you're allowed to do. Is there a time limit keeping a clock on you? Yeah, yeah. So we definitely, uh, Carolyn, that, that's been the plan is to work back in uh, incrementally and not to try to rush it too fast. Um, and that's, we talked a little bit earlier, that's what my surgeon just uh, urged the entire time. It just, just, if I didn't listen to anything else, please be patient. And because what you didn't want to do is get to a spot uh, and, and, and set yourself back even, even further. So, um, you know, there's been, there's, it's, it, it, it just started out, uh, just go in when you feel, when you feel like, when you feel you're up to doing a little bit of work. And so we just started, you know, really, really small, like an hour or two a day and, and it's built up from there. And then um, for a while, certainly the concern was my uh, head still had not healed from the surgery. So you didn't want to be out and around the court and, and a ball, you know, uh, errant pass or something hits you. And so that, that kept me off the court for a while. And so that, that would be watching practice from, from, you know, the observation deck or something like that. And then uh, I, it was October 15th uh, when I was finally cleared physically to go back. And so we've just kind of been working, you know, a, a steady build up, you know, 25, 50, 75. And, you know, the plan is to be full speed um, a, a little bit before um, um, we start the season. So, you know, I'm, I'm able to, to give a lot of input and, and to, you know, see a lot of practice and, um, like I said, the assistants have just done a great job and, um, I just can't, I just, I, I can't sing their praises enough. I just can't tell you what it was like to, to, um, not see the team for a while and then go and see the progress that they're making. And, and basically, you know, it, it, it looks exactly like a Kentucky basketball team. And I, I just, I'm just really, really appreciative of, of the assistants, and their commitment to what we have have built here. So um, it, it definitely has been a, a slow and, and limited process, but uh, I think it's been the, the smartest way to go about it. And then when it comes to Ryan Howard, coming into last season, you had said she was going to have to take about 20 shots a game. Now you've got some other pieces around her. So... Now, what is going to be the requirement of a Ryan Howard? Yeah, I, I think that it, it's still important for her to stay really aggressive, Carolyn, and 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 um, the, while I haven't had the conversation like that with her yet, uh, as far as a number, um, when she what we when she's open, she needs to shoot the ball. She needs to every every. You know, so if a team leaves her open every possession, she needs to shoot it. She she is such a great scorer and shooter. It is, it's just amazing. So, um, you know, I used to get in trouble for shooting the ball, and uh, when when I played, and Brian Howard's gonna get in trouble for not shooting the ball. So so she just <laughs> needs to shoot. She needs to fire away and just have that mentality of of aggressive. Um, attack mentality offensively because she she is um, a, a very special player and um, any open shot for her is a good shot. And then the last question I have through adversity usually there's something somebody can take from it that they've learned or gain an appreciation for what what has that been for you to going through this? Well you know, Carolyn, it's a, a pretty sobering uh, moment. Um, and it just makes you understand how precious life is. And, and uh, I know we all say that and, and, and uh, believe that, but, but it, it, just, it just makes you realize that, um, that we're, not, we're just not promised anything. And, and so, so um, what I've just tried to do is, is be real grateful to God for all the, the blessings of, I have of, of my family 
and and then you know the opportunity to be around such a special group of people that that's in our basketball program these are incredible young women who are um, just going to make make uh, a, a great great team and a team that I think we're all going to be proud of and it's just real real incredible opportunity to be around a, a group of people like that so I think it just heightens uh, has heightened my gratitude for uh, for the just tremendous people that are in my life and I'm, I'm real grateful for that well, Matthew, glad to see you back. And this might be an excuse for you to be able to wear a little toupee if you wanted to yeah. up top to protect well, that well, spot. <laughs> well, I certainly need I certainly need one. So uh, maybe people would cut me some slack now. Yeah, I could say I'm covering the surgical wound and uh, also get rid of my bald spot. So that that that's a great idea, Carolyn. That, that, you, you always have good ideas like that. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. Alex Walker. Uh, Matthew, uh, piggybacking off that question, a couple of questions ago about um, attendance restrictions. You know, no matter how many fans are going to be there this season, there's going to be some moments in games where there's some lulls and crowd noise and in, in an area where a player needs to give your team that energy boost, right? Chastity Patterson seemed like every time she came into the game last year, she gave you guys that that swagger, that energy, kind of picked you guys up a notch. Will you count on her extra this year to kind of provide that energy, especially with the restrictions that are going to be in place? Yeah, I tell you, that's a great point. And she is, um, she is doing such a great job and she is uh, electrifying her, her, her energy and her speed and her, uh, she's just so dynamic um, on both ends of the floor that uh, I think we'll definitely look to her to provide some energy. And um, she has a huge heart and cares so much for her team and, um, just as is a consummate playmaker. So she uh, will we'll rely on her a lot for energy and uh, she she certainly brings it um, on the court right now and 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 so yeah we'll we'll, we'll rely on her a lot for that um, during this season. Anything else? Thanks everyone for being here today. Thank you, coach. It is good to see you. And uh, we'll have another one of these closer to the season. So thanks everybody. Thanks so much.